Now this is a power meter that has had a lot of attention lately and one that went straight to the top of my testing list due to the amount of messages that I've been sent asking how it performs. So here we are, my deep dive into the testing of the Eli Lee or Eli Lee EK01 power meter. Now I've likely mispronounced that name, but that's the last of the problems that I've had with this meter to date. Yeah, hold tight. Kicking off with the technical specifications, it's a spider-based power meter, four bolts, 110 BCD. I don't have 110 fingers to hold up. Comes in at 97 grams, which was verified before installing. There's also a 67 gram version of this for about twice the price. Claimed accuracy, plus or minus 1%, wireless protocols, Bluetooth and AMP+. Plus. The data we get out of this spider is power, cadence, and left-right balance, although that balance is an estimate due to it being a spider. 300 hours of usage out of its internal rechargeable battery, IP67 water resistance rating, ATC, the crank interface or mount is an Eastern Cinch, and there's a mobile app for firmware upgrades and device management. Paired with this spider for my testing was the X310 carbon crank set with a titanium spindle in 24mm that obviously has an Eastern Cinch crank spider interface. There's also a 28.99 alloy dub version of this crank set. There's no chain rings, this is just the crank arms and spindle only. Now when put together with rings, the Alloy EK01 with the X310 cranks in 170mm with some 52 36 12 speed G-Race train rings comes in at 560 grams on my scales. Not bad. Now when it comes to pricing, the EK01 Alloy version comes in at around $550 Australian or 310 US. The crank set that I was using comes in at about $700 Australian or 410 US. Factoring in the rings, it's about $300 Australian or around $195 US. The total cost for this setup was about $1548 Aussie or around $900 US. So there's more to the pricing than just the power meter spider. What is a relatively cost effective spider meter doubles or triples in price when factoring in everything else you might need. One upside of this being modular is the ability to switch cranks to different lengths. It's not cheap to do, but it can be done. You can also save some dollars if you already have the correct chain rings. Now the carbon version of the EK01 Spider comes in at 1200 Aussie dollars. It's the same tech, it has the same FCC ID as the alloy EK01, it's just 30 grams lighter. There's also a lighter crank set too, making the carbon EK01 with the x tree Centino crank set around $2600 Australian. Now pricing will vary a lot depending on where you're buying from, either direct from China or from a local reseller who will likely provide faster response to after sale service and support. Now when it comes to the crank set, I'll refer you to the Slayer of Grams, Rides of Japan's other channel, for a deep dive review of the X310 crank. I'll put a link in the video description to this 12 minute overview, it's well worth a watch if you're looking at picking up a set of these cranks. But my focus for this review is more on the power meter side of things and its performance, so let's get straight into that. Starting off with my indoor observations, using the EK01 Alloy Spider, the Asiyama Pro RS power meter pedals and the Tax Neo 3M Smart Trainer, the power data was, on average, lining up pretty well, as I'd expect. But the averages don't tell the whole story. There were a number of data drops on both power and cadence for four to five seconds each from the EK01. The peak power sprints reported a little lower from the EK01. This was flagged for further testing. There was a small amount of downwards drift during the session, and this was observed by performing two separate 200 watt erg tests done about an hour apart, where the Neo 3M and the Asiyama Pro RS reported similar values for each test, but the EK01 had dropped a few percent in the second test. There was also a small amount of lag on power increases and drop offs from the EK01, and cadence was reporting a little higher than the Neo 3 and the Pro RS. The next day, prior to taking the bike and power meters outdoors to dig further into some of those indoor observations, I noted there was a firmware update to version 1.10. And in translating the change log, it looks like they're aware of some of the behaviors that I was seeing and were attempting to address them. In particular, notes one and two. Number one, optimize response delay, hopefully addressing that lag in power that I was seeing. And number two, fix an issue where cadence data fluctuated abnormally under certain conditions, hopefully fixing some of those cadence problems. Now unfortunately my outside testing didn't show any improvement. In fact, well let's have a look at the summary before we dig into the data. And what I was seeing outdoors is the data is still lagging from the EK01. Cadence was extremely erratic, which looks to be the cause of the peak power sprint issue, which we're underreporting a lot. And this is a big problem. I also noted there was residual torque after peak power sprints where the EK01 required a manual zero offset to resolve. Now it's not the first time I've seen these issues with spider power meters and it's why I check for them in my testing. Now jumping to my favorite website to dig a little deeper onto each of those observations. This is the EK01 with the Asiyama Pro RS outdoors. Let's first look at that data lagging, which was performed a little later in the session through here where I would pedal, stop and coast, pedal, stop and coast, rinse and repeat. Here's what things look like for that. Now typically 
when we see issues like this, it's a recording problem. So one head unit was recording one second ahead of the other or one second behind. These are lined up perfectly because I have one single heart rate strap that I pair both units to and I make sure the heart rate data is lined up. And what we're seeing here is lag on the uptake and lag on the decrease of power from the EK01. And some of the times it's not just one data point either, it can be up to two. So lag still occurring. Looking at the cadence data from outside, and it's probably worse outside than it is inside. Outside, there's a lot more things going on. Indoors, your bike is relatively stable. Outside, the cadence was, well, it was terrible. Let's have a look at that here. Up and down, extremely jagged. I wouldn't call it unsmooth. I would call it just simply inaccurate. I was not doing 90 RPM, 62 RPM, 90 RPM within the case of three data points. That's just not recording correctly or not reporting correctly either. Those with a keen eye would have already seen this drop right here, and that is the sprints. Without correct cadence with these power meters, you're not gonna get correct power. This was very similar to what was happening with the Vector 3s and the original versions of the rallies where a certain sprint style would cause the cadence sensor to read zero, therefore the power would read zero. Scrolling straight up to this, let's get those three sprints uh, right here. Not good. Second sprint again performed. EK01 well under. And the third sprint was extremely poor. And scrolling down to the cadence, yeah, that's what's going on there. So for whatever reason, with those hard accelerations, full sprints, the EK01 is just completely shitting the bed. I think that's a technical term. Now, in addition to the power problems with peak power was residual torque. And again, this is not the first rodeo that I've had with residual torque. This is where you'd ride along at a steady state and observe the two power meters, perform a peak power sprint, and then continue riding at about the same zone and check for any differences either side of that peak power sprint. And yeah, this was occurring multiple times. A good one to look at is probably through here, the middle one. 222, 221, two power meters, very, very close. The EK01, the Asiama Pro RS, with obviously the lag happening there as well, but they're pretty close. Peak power sprint takes place. Well, one power meter did a peak power sprint, the other one didn't get out of bed. And post that, now remember we were within a watt or so. Post that, we're at 263 and 256. We are separated. So I stopped, I zeroed just the EK01, and then continue riding. And we're now bang on again, we're equal. So after that peak power sprint, something had changed. The two power meters were not agreeing as close as they were before. And then zeroing the EK01, they came back into line. Now there's more to it than that. I did this three other times during the ride with the same results each time. So things aren't looking too good at this point, either indoors or out for the testing that I was performing. Now riding at a steady state with a freshly zeroed EK01, the power data is okay but strange things happen over a thousand watts. And that cadence reporting is absolutely nuking the sprint data. That's an absolute showstopper. However, that's data from only one test unit. Maybe it's a once off. Maybe I'm doing something wrong with my testing. That's always a possibility. A quick side note is that the Asiama Pro RS are being subject to exactly the same testing at exactly the same time. And they're both stable and reliable enough to identify these issues occurring with the EK01. Now the Asiama is being a trusted baseline is not news. They've been proven to be rock solid over many, many years and even longer with the Asiama Duos. So the company did send over their Carbon Spider EK01 as well. So I swapped that out with the alloy version. I updated that to version firmware 1.10. And here's where the previous findings will either be cleared or confirmed. So let's ignore the first 10 minutes of this test here because it was really, really ugly. And that could be for a few reasons. There was a massive difference between the two power meters and the EK01 completely missing every single acceleration but I stopped, everything was temperature stable and zeroed both power meters and performed three sprint tests and some acceleration tests. One thing of note is that all throughout this test, the Carbon EK01 and the Asiama Pros disagreed with power, the Carbon version of the EK01 spider reading lower than the Asiomas. Here we're looking at around 15, 20 watts off just before the sprint, just after the sprint, there's 10 watts difference there. And look, let's just go right to the end and have a look through here. We're looking at 137, 147, just riding home. So not at any point did these two power meters agree, like the alloy one did when it was freshly zeroed. You can also see the lag still happening there with the uptake in power. But the sprints, oh my, the sprints. Let's have a look at sprint number one. Mm, sprint number two. Uh, sprint number three. Uh. And yeah, it's the cadence problem happening again. Scrolling down for that, cadence is completely, uh, again, shitting the bed. Now, I guess the question is, is how do you know I'm not actually 
changing down through gears as I start the sprint. Well, I've got it all on video. I've got thousands and thousands of data sets that, well, indicate that I can sprint. And that curve that we're seeing here from the cadence on the ASIO is, is exactly what happens during a sprint. You pick a gear, you ramp up, and as the speed increases, your cadence increases, unless it's the LIE power meter, which is doing its own thing. Either way, sprints are absolutely cooked on this unit. Into the quick acceleration tests, and again, we're seeing lag and its inability to hit the same peaks uh, for each of those small little accelerations through here. And lastly, the cadence as well outdoors with this unit was the same as the other unit outdoors. And that is that it's extremely jagged. So I didn't perform a full Llama lab test protocol on either one of these EK01 meters. Being able to reproduce the same critical issues across both units was a good reason to pause any further testing. There's a few more things on the list that I need to test with these, but that's going to be for another time. And to be honest, I'm not surprised to see the problems such as these. Getting power meters right is extremely hard. Established power meter company brands are on their fourth or fifth generation of power meters to date. I'm just surprised to see these issues come up in late 2025 when access to trusted reference meters, testing processes and protocols are well known, access to people with experience in testing meters and analysis tools has never been better. Look, all my data sets and results have been with the company since late last week, and that's where we're at. The ball is in their court for now. Now, finally, on a related topic, one thing I think spider power meter companies completely miss the mark on is presenting their product in a way that an average user knows what to buy. Spider power meters need crank arms, chain rings, bottom bracket and chain line compatibility, I guess in short, group set compatibility. Look, if a rider wants a GRX power meter or a power meter for their SRAM 1 by axis gravel bike, how do they know if these will be suitable or not? Now, specking these out on new bikes is one thing, but choosing a power meter for an existing bike becomes a research project. I'd love to see spider power meter companies publish a list of compatible configurations, guides, examples, to hold the hand at all levels of consumer during that decision process. Now, this is one of the reasons why pedal power meters are so popular. You pick a brand, you pick a cleat system that you like, and you install them in minutes. Now, when installing this power meter here and swapping the carbon version over as well, the thing that took the least amount of time was installing the pedals. Hmm. All right, that's a wrap on this one for now. Thanks for watching. Typically, I'd say like, subscribe. Um, I guess here I'll just say, don't blame me. I want this shit to work. And we'll see you next time. Okay, so if you follow me on Instagram, you may have seen this occur. Some young kid put his car through a pole while I was out here testing this power meter. Here's me looping back to check on the young kid. He was all right. Are you okay? I'm, I'm all right. You're okay? Yeah, I just don't know what to do. No, 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 it's all right. It's all right. Don't worry about it. Don't worry about it. As long as you're okay, mate. Yeah. All right, just chill. I'm just glad it was the pole and not me that he put his car through.